Hi everybody, it's Julie. Welcome to Hello Monday. It's going to be a pretty exciting week as a bunch of us at Ellen Hudson are playing along with the folks at Winnie and Walter in their Share the Love challenges going on all week. So be sure to stop by the classroom each day this week and the Winnie and Walter blog to see what the challenges are and some pretty eye candy. Maybe you're going to play along in the challenges because, geez, who knows, you could win a prize, right? So you got to get in on the action. And because it's Monday and it's my day with y'all, I'm going to be starting y'all off with the floral challenge. And I'm going to prep my watercolor paper here with an anti-static pouch and then stamp with Versamark ink. And my stamp is a little bit dirty because I was using it with some other techniques and I didn't clean it very well. But Versamark is a clear ink and because my stamp was a little bit dirty, um, it was actually showing up on the watercolor paper and I could see where to stamp the the center of those flowers. And this is from a stamp set called The Big, The Bold, and The Extras by Winnie and Walter. And I'm going to apply some gold embossing powder over the top there. I think this is Pirate's Gold by Stampendous. And then I'm going to heat set it. I preheated my heat gun for about 30 seconds and I like to use a shoebox lid and just toss my piece in there and heat it up so that I don't end up getting my fingers in the way and burning myself. And then once it's all nice and shiny and melted and there's no granular spots anywhere, it's good to go for watercolor. And I'm going to activate my watercolors by adding some drops of water to it and then using a Pentel Aquash water brush to load up with color and just start slopping it on. Now this is kind of like a quick and dirty method of watercolor. I'm not being very careful at all. I'm just loosely slopping that color all over the place and letting it bleed outside the lines. I'm not, you know, trying to color each petal very carefully a certain color or anything like that. So once I've got that orange slopped on there, I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to speed set it. And the reason why I'm doing this, and I do want to make sure I don't get so close that I remelt the embossing powder. I just want to get close enough to dry the paint. I love those hard lines you get when you dry the paint like that or it dries really quickly. Um, I just think it's a really neat painterly look. So after that was dried, I went ahead and added the pinkish red and then here, geez, did I give you whiplash there? <laughs> I came back in and did it again with the heat gun there so that I could trim them out with my scissors. And I trimmed out very closely to the embossing lines there. And I've got them stacked over there on the right. And then I'm going to start building my card. I'm going to use some Easter grass by uh, Basil. This is from the card shop line. Nice, thick, 100-pound cardstock. And I'm going to create kind of a channel here with this white wood grain cardstock. And I trimmed it down first to kind of see how wide I needed that gap to be. And then I knew how much to trim off on the other side. And this is the new Fiskars paper trimmer they came out with this year. I absolutely love it. That metal bar means you get really nice, straight, accurate cuts and no more wavy wobbling around. And the blades don't fall off the trimmer. So now if they come out with Teflon blades, I will really, really be jumping all over the place on that trimmer. But it is a great trimmer. Absolutely love it. So now I'm going to take all my flowers and I'm going to put some adhesive on the back. And I put tape runner on the back of three of them. And then I'm going to use this really cool uh, thinner 3D foam squares by Scrapbook Adhesives on the back of two of those flowers. And then I'm going to add regular foam tape to the back side of my white wood grain pieces because those are going to be popped up at the highest level. So now I'm going to go ahead and crease the fold line with my Teflon bone folder on the base card here and then I can start gluing everything into place. Now I put the adhesive deliberately, those foam pieces, deliberately to the right hand side of that strip of white wood grain because I want to allow some room for sliding those other flowers and tucking them. Here you can see what I mean. These are the pieces that have the tape runner on the back side and I'm just kind of placing them a little bit wonky, but I want the edges to be able to slide under that white wood grain piece and not get impeded by the foam tape. And that's why I made sure I put some allowance um, and space there along that edge. And then I can go ahead and take the other two flowers that have the thinner foam dots on them and get those mounted in place. And I like having them a little bit wonky. They're not in a straight line and you can see some of that green cardstock peeking out between the flowers and it gives you the illusion of some foliage and leaves that are going on even though I didn't um, actually make the effort to do that. <laughs> I'm kind of cheating. So then I'm going to go ahead and take uh, the other side of that panel. Again, you can see how I put the foam tape on there so that it's not going to get mounted over the top of those flowers and create a weird lumpy bumpy effect on the front of the card. Everything's going to be nice and level when I'm done with that. So there we've got that part done. And the next 
uh, step is to go ahead and remove the liner papers from the rest of those so that everything is anchored in place. I usually take it away from part of those uh, pieces and then once I'm sure it's all on there straight I can remove the liner papers from the rest with my tweezers. Now I use the Essentials by Ellen uh, Scripty Hello die to die cut some double-sided foam. This is by Thermoweb and it's part of their foiling uh, product line and I absolutely love it because it's got liner paper on both sides. It's nice thin dimensional foam and it's great for die cutting. Those low profile dies will go right through it. Popped out some of those negative pieces that I'm not going to need and then I'm going to peel back uh, the liner paper on the back side and get this mounted into place. Now it is a little bit uh, wobbly because it is thinner foam and you know it's not like cardstock. It does have some flex to it. And so I had to kind of use my uh, pokey tool there to get underneath it and shift it. I didn't press down too hard at first in case I needed to move it, and, which is always a good thing. Don't push it down permanently until you're, you're sure that's where you want it. Because once it's down, it's not coming up. <laughs> and then I can take some foil. This is the transfer foil by Thermoweb, pretty side up. This is gold. And I'm going to burnish it into that adhesive with the pads of my fingers. I'm not using my fingernails or anything hard. I'm just using the pads of my fingers. And this is how you get a really nice, smooth foil finish. Very glassy looking. And then for one last finishing touch, I thought it would be fun to grab my favorite Pretty Pink Posh Sparkling Clear Sequence. I've got the four millimeter and six millimeter sizes and I squirted a little bit of that multi-medium onto a post-it note. And then I'm just using my tweezers to grab the sequins and swipe them through and then put them into position. And here you can see all the different layers of dimension going on in this little channel of green going down the right hand side of my card front. I think it looks so cool and adds a really neat detail. It just looks like they're floating in there. Super cool. Hope you'll play along in the challenges and enjoy the week. We've got more still shots and details at the classroom blog and all the supplies are available at ellenhudson.com. Thanks for watching.